Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, I'm Shadow, and today we're going to be playing Arkham Horror the Card Game. Now, we are playing the tabletop workshopped version of the game, so somebody, um, I'll get the name if this becomes super popular and credit them every single video, but um, someone's come together and done a massive amount of uh, work, I think so. Um, a lot of little bit of coding went in to get this all working. But uh, Arkham Horror the card game, yeah. I own this in real life. I have almost all the cards. I'm going to timestamp this. This is the end of November 2019. The last pack to come out was the Search for Kadath in the Dream Eater cycle. Uh, I believe that is the second Mythos pack. First, no, it's the first Mythos pack. And the latest standalone scenario was murder at the excelsior hotel uh blob hasn't come out yet the blob that ate everything the only thing i'm missing out of arkham horror is uh the guardians of the abyss uh, so those who know arkham horror that's what i'm missing and that's what i have in real life so those will be the packs that you'll be seeing in the decks that i make for those that are new arkham horror is a card game you can pick up at your friendly local game store uh, I think it runs about $40 ish probably less than an American um, I'm Canadian and uh, yeah it's it's just a fun game it's a living card game so if you don't know what that is uh, all the packs that you can get have set cards every single t so it's not like a trading card game it's not like Pokemon when you open a pack and you might get something no you'll always get the same thing so uh, you'd only have to buy everything once, except for a core set, you might want two. I have two. Um, but yeah, so that's that's Arkham Horror. Uh, I'm going to explain a lot more, because this is an introductory video. I'm not going to go too crazy into things. Um, this is just going to be introductory more to my channel than as a teaching guide or anything, but I'll try to teach everything I can as I go. Um, but I won't go everything twice, so pay attention. So in the course set, there are three scenarios for the campaign called Night of the Zealot. So in the Night of the Zealot, there's the Gathering, and then you go on to Midnight Masks after that, and then after Midnight Masks, you go into Devourer Below. You can play standalone, and when you play standalone, you can play at different levels where you have... Uh, experience point cards already in your deck but when you start at the first game and you're doing the campaign you start with no experience so all your cards are level zero um, you'll see I'll explain everything as we go alright so I think I've already got the first game set up the gathering here so uh, this mod has all this stuff perfectly laid out for you here's a map I don't think I've ever seen something be this big like um, a sprawling map and it's funny because you only start with one location at the beginning but uh, before we get into that um, let's talk about the investigator we're gonna be so we're gonna be playing Roland Banks so Roland Banks is a guardian so there are five classes guardian seeker mystic rogue and survivor and there's one neutral but it's an outlier uh, so he is a guardian, you can tell that by the blue kind of background of the whole card and the blue star at the top left. Roland has three willpower, so that's the first number, the like little blue square with the white head silhouetted. Three intellect, which is right beside it with the little book symbol, purple. Four fight, fist with the red background, and two agility. Uh, winged boots with a green background. He is agency and detective traded. Uh, that little arrow symbol is a, I think, free action? No, it's a reaction ability. After you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location, limit once per round. And then the little star is elder sign effect, plus one for each clue in your location, and I'll explain elder signs. When you see uh, the italics as flavor text on a card, so for a Roland, everything by the book. Every I dotted, every T crossed. It worked, and it had worked until now. He has nine health threshold and a five sanity threshold. If he meets the limit of either one, he is defeated. Um, 
and a different penalty will be applied. So if he loses all his health, he'll get a physical trauma, and if he loses all his sanity, he gets a mental trauma. And all that means is in the next scenario, he starts with one less of that, so he'd come into the next one with eight if he had a, f a physical, and he'd come in with four if he had a mental, and those do stack. So if you just keep dying <laughs> from scenario to scenario, which, which tends to happen, like, say you get a mental trauma with Roland, you're going 9-4, that's not good, and if you get another one, that's 9-3, and yeah, once you get all the way down, all the trauma, and you can't get any more, then he is officially insane or killed, but that shouldn't happen for this, so, so let's get these stats going here, um, 3-3-4-2. Three, three, <clears throat> this is just a little th thing I've added. Uh, same with over here. Um, actually, I should have had something ready, but I didn't. But I'll do it live. Doing it live. Okay. This is the deck. It's, uh... It's not the most amazing there we go it's not the most amazing deck I'm not the best deck builder but uh, I like to have fun and try out new things so if there's some weird things here it's probably because I'm trying out something please uh, please send me your ideas uh, I'll be waiting a week in between each post um, or before each recording so uh, yeah feel free to uh, tell me what's what so that's the deck. Uh, you can go to that link. It'll probably be in the description of the video if you want to just click on it there. Uh, so uh, we saw the Elder Sign. So there are different tokens. This is the Elder Sign. It's different for every single investigator. It's a special ability that will pop up. There's only one in the bag. I don't think there's any way to ever get two. Uh, beside it here is the Auto Fail token, the Tentacle token. So an auto fail means you fail at a zero. Um, even if you tie, like if zero is the difficulty, doesn't matter. It's an automatic failure. These three symbols change for every single scenario. So let's go ahead and figure out what it is for this first one. So for the gathering scenario, the skulls will be minus X, where X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. The green cultist is minus one. If you fail, you take one horror. And the blue tablet is minus two. If there is a ghoul enemy at your location, take one damage. So the I like to put the reference here, so it's easy to remember. Um, I could put it. I could put it anywhere here. Really, it doesn't matter. If we run out of threat areas, I'll move it. The reason I have all the tokens out is so that you can see the probability. Um, so usually you can tell by being two up, including these, um, only these ones will make you fail. Uh, sometimes this depending on what your ability does, like Roland's ability uh, is for the clue on the location. So if there are no clues on the location, it's as good as a zero. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I like to have them here. Uh, in the real game, you put these into an opaque bag or an opaque container and you rummage around and you pull one out when you do a skill test. So the way they have it here is it's in this little like book and they have a little macro that you click on here and it shuffles through and picks one for you. Um, speaking of shuffling, shuffle that deck and shuffle the encounter deck. Alright, um, let's get into the guide here. So this is what would come with the actual game itself. There's a PDF of it on Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, the people who produce it on their website. Ooh, don't press spacebar. Okay, the Ghoul's Hunger, Friday, September eighteenth, nineteen twenty-five, Arkham, Massachusetts. It is the end of a long and abnormally hot summer. The first hints of autumn beckon, but a heavy heat persists, relentless. A silent, unspoken anger grips the town. Tempers are short, and in the last week alone there have been numerous reports of townspeople coming to heated, violent blows with one another over simple misunderstandings. And now a call from James Hankerson. 
He claims to have found a dismembered body in his barn. Blaming the weather would be too easy. There is something wrong with this town, and not a whole lot this old soothsayer can do to stop the slide. My auguries indicate a small group of investigators will soon take note of these strange happenings and set forth to make things right. I'll be watching their progress, but I won't be holding my breath. Alright, uh, so I'll just summarize what's below what I just read. So, this game is a 1-4 to four player game, but it, uh, you should note that if you buy the core set in real life, um, you can only play two people. There's only enough cards to be split between two people with the core set alone, so you would need two core sets to play with four people. Um, but... Yeah, the more cards you buy through the cycles and stuff, that would change. Alright, we've chosen Investigator. We've in assembled our deck. We've chosen our difficulty level, which is standard. And we've assembled the Chaos Bag, as right here. And then we'll move on to the first scenario, which is Part 1, The Gathering. You and your partners have been investigating strange events taking place in your home city of Arkham, Massachusetts. Over the past few weeks, several townspeople have mysteriously gone missing. Recently, their corpses turned up in the woods, savaged and half-eaten. The police and newspapers have stated that wild animals are responsible, but you believe there is something else going on. You are gathered together at the lead investigator's home to discuss the bizarre events. So, uh, below is what you would do in real life to set it up, but the person who created this in the workshop has automatically already done all this stuff for you. So you collect the six sets, put them together, we set aside the locations already done, and we're ready to start. So the we with those six sets you build the encounter deck and you make sure it's all nice and shuffled. Then there's an agenda and an act. So each of them has a threshold, a number that will reach. The agenda ticks at least one doom per turn, except for the very first turn. And the act only progresses when you can collect enough clues, and I'll explain how you get those later. But first let's go with agenda one A. What's going on? It is late at night and you are holed up in your study researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And it has a threshold of three doom. So we have three ticks after the first turn. And I have a little turn counter right here. So we are, this is the first turn. Act 1A, Trapped. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only a solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. So this has two clues we have to get, and the little symbol there is like a man in a fedora with a popped collar there. That just means per investigator. It'll show up a few times, um, but when you're playing solo, it's just the first number you see there. So two clues we need to get. All right. We've already gone over the scenario card. Okay, so oh, I should also mention the art is fantastic. Just take a second to the art is so good in this game, and uh, the illustrators are on every card. It's not the same illustrator for every card in the core set. So this one is like Mark Molnar, and this one is Jose Vega. So they're all different, but they're all great. Um, it's always worth taking a second to take a look. Now, uh, I'll explain this card. So this is an unrevealed location. This is our study. So underneath the word study, you see a little lock that just represents an unrevealed location. In the center there, that little torch is the uh, symbol of the set that that card came from. And uh, the title is what, it's a location card. You've been investigating the strange events occurring in Arkham for several days now. Your desk is covered in newspaper articles, police reports, and witness accounts. Uh, the symbol at the top left is the location symbol. If there were other locations to connect to, the six circles in the bottom would have colors and symbols in there. And I'd put a little connector on the board to show you how they connected. But uh, we won't see that until a bit later. Um, the symbol at the bottom right of the card, the little elder sign uh, star, that is just the symbol of the set itself. Uh, so the core set is that. And then once again, you've probably been staring at the art, but the art is amazing. That's where the door was, and you can see all the fun little things going on. Okay, so now we flip it. Alright, and since the workshop mod already puts clues on there for us, 
Let's take a look at the other side of the study. So the differences you see here are there are now numbers on the middle left and middle right. So the middle left with the black background is the shroud. So this is the test you have to meet to get the clues. And on the right side there, two per investigator is how many clues will be on this location. So it'll be two for us. We have to compare our intellect versus the shroud location to get a clue. All right, so the study says the door to your study has vanished. We knew this. Okay, two clues to get. Roland is here. Now to start the turn. So your health and sanity start at zero unless you have trauma, which we're just starting, so we shouldn't. We draw five cards. We start with five resources. All right. And we can mulligan stuff. So if you don't know what the term mulligan means is uh, for on the first turn you can select cards to put back in your deck. Uh, you cannot start with a weakness unless the weakness says you're kind of forced to start with it, which surprise we might have that. Um, I might hold on to perception. I'll read it I'll read through all the cards once I've made the mulligan decision here. Um, because we have B cop I might hold on to emergency cash. I'll ditch, take the initiative, and I'll keep magnifying glass, which isn't too exciting of a turn, because probably should be fishing for weapons, but... Oh well. I just realized my deck is in the wrong spot. It's in the discard. And we'll shuffle up. Okay, let's see what our hand is. Perception is a skill. Under the skill word there, it has two icons, two uh, intellect icons. Now, Skill cards can only be committed to tests, and when you commit it to a test, you get these in addition to um, your total. So we investigate at a three, we would add two, put us in, put, putting us at five. And on a skill card, you get whatever the text says. So underneath, practice, max one committed per skill test. If successful, draw one card. At last, I found it. Now the difference is, our second card here, Beat Cop. This is an asset. Uh, cost four. It has one into into bleh, one fight pip underneath. It is ally and police traded, and he gives us a static plus one fight, so he's pretty good. Excuse me. And he has a uh, fast ability, where you can discard him to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. He has two health and two sanity, so we could distribute that to him, and he takes up our ally slot. Now. If we were doing a test and we had Beat Cop in our hand and we discarded Beat Cop, he would give us plus one fight because uh, that is the pip on him. But unlike a skill, it doesn't matter what is written on his card because you're just chucking the card to help you. Next up, a zero cost event emergency cash. It's a supply card, gain three resources. You can never be too prepared. Next up, magnifying glass, a one cost asset an item tool. It's fast, so fast you don't have to spend an action. You get plus one only while investigating. A lens into a world unseen can reveal things you wish it hadn't. And then lastly here we have Steadfast. It is another skill with a willpower and fight pip. While you have five or more total remaining health and sanity, Steadfast gains an extra copy of both of those. While you have 10 or more total remaining health and sanity, it gets two extra. There is a fine line between bravery and foolishness. So the earlier we play steadfast before we take damage, it'll give us three fight or three willpower when we commit it. So that's pretty good. Alright. So I think here, turn one, um, we're probably going to gear up. So the game starts... How do I do this? Let's move this up here. The game starts in the investigation phase. There are four phases. There's the mythos, which is skipped in the first turn, the investigation, enemy, and upkeep phase. At the end of the upkeep phase is technically end of round. So during the investigation phase, which is what we're in, you can do these things. You can only do, and you get three actions. You can draw a card or gain a resource, play an event or asset from your hand. Fast cards do not cost an action, like I mentioned. You can activate a triggered ability on a card you own, an investigator you own, or a location. 
You can move to a connecting location. You can investigate your location. You can fight or engage an enemy at your location. You can attempt to evade an enemy at your location. Or sorry, uh, attempt to evade an enemy engaged with you. Sorry. And then uh, fast actions or reaction abilities don't cost an action to activate. If you're engaged with an enemy and spend an action to do anything other than fight, evade, parlay, or resign, the enemy engaged with you makes an attack of opportunity. So we won't have to worry about that for this turn, but we're just going to gear up. So these are going to be my action tokens, and I'll flip them as I do things. So we're going to play Beat Cop and take away all of our resources. Then we'll flip another one to play Magnifying Glass. Oh no, sorry, Magnifying Glass is fast, but we'll play Emergency Cash for that second action to get three back. And I think for our fourth action, we're going to draw a card. Okay, not bad. I was kind of fishing for a weapon there, but uh, Bandolier is okay. So that was all three of our actions. We didn't do anything yet. Um, so when the investigation phase ends, we go into the enemy phase. During the enemy phase, enemies with the hunter keyword move towards the nearest investigator. So that is the basic explanation of the hunter word. And then each engaged enemy attacks if able. So we have no enemies. Moving on to the upkeep phase. In the upkeep phase, you reset actions. So say we had to exhaust a card. We would just tap it sideways. Defense mode. Um, but none of our cards do that. So, But if we did, we would ready all of them. This includes exhausted enemies. Each investigator draws one card, gains a resource, and then you check your hand size and, and uh, get down to eight. But we don't have to worry about that for a while. All right, we drew Vicious Blow. I didn't even talk about Bandolier, did I? So Bandolier is a two cost asset. It's an item. You have one additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a weapon asset. And it uh, provides one health worth of uh, armor. And it takes up the body slot. Which, I do have a lot of weapons, they're just not here. Uh, vicious Blow is a skill. If the skill test is successful during an attack, the attack deals plus one damage. With a sickening smack, he struck the abomination over and over. Until at last, it stopped moving. Okay, and that's the upkeep phase. Now, go into the Mythos phase. So we are now in turn two. One Doom of three. And our first encounter card... Alright, this is the Icy Ghoul. I'll explain the card, and then I'll explain why it cannot spawn. So the Icy Ghoul has three fight, the red there, four health, the middle and brown, and four uh, evade. So you need to pass a test of four to evade it. It is humanoid monster ghoul traded, and it only spawns in the cellar. So if it did not have the spawn tag, it would be engaged with me. But because it has the spawn in the cellar, something else is going to happen. But we'll read the flavor anyways. Inside the tunnels beneath the house, a massive beast tears its way out of the ice. It is covered in a thick layer of frost, its breath visible in the bitter cold. It's worth one victory point. So right there beside the uh, symbol of the torch, on the left it would deal two damage, and on the right it would also deal one horror to us if it attacked us. And then take a second to look at Chin Lo's art there pretty good. Now we don't have the cellar location in play so it is an illegal spawn and it is discarded. They fixed that in the uh, there's a return to set so way up here all the sets this is the core set and they have a return to Night of the Zealot set where they replaced this location and fixed that issue but uh, I wanted to show the core core game experience so that's what happened in the core game for at least a good like year and a bit. Okay, so we kind of lucked out. Uh, no encounter. So we get another turn of setup if we want. So let's go to the investigation phase. Flip these back over. Um, I'm going to fish one more card. Okay. And then I'm going to try and investigate. So when we investigate... I'm actually at plus one, so it'll be a four to the shroud of two. So let's do it. That is minus two. If there's ghoul enemy at your location, take one damage. So we tie. 
So in a tie in this game, you get it's a success. Okay, and we'll do it again. As a minus one, if you fail, take one horror. So we get the clue. And when there is no force, no ability forcing you to advance, or uh, a special directive, like you have to be at a specific location, it is a free action to, uh, to uh, advance. So what I think I'm going to do here is just go ahead and advance. We'll spend the two clues. So these go away. And by advancing, you take the card and you flip it over and read what's on the back. The door on the floor, Act 1B. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet, landing your landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rotten decay. Put into play the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic, and parlor. Discard each enemy in the study, place each investigator in the hallway, and remove the study from the game. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. All the locations are set aside here. So the parlor will go here. Study can just go away. Cellar will go below. Attic will go above. And the hallway will go right there. And then we'll get some location markers. There we go. So as you can see, the hallway is a red square at the top left there. And you see at the bottom, it's connected to three locations the blue triangle, the brown plus, or maroon plus, and uh, green diamond. Green diamond, blue triangle, maroon plus. And none of them, as you can see at the bottom, connect to anything else besides the red square. Okay. Act 2A, the barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. Objective. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance, which is three. All right. So the art for the hallway looks pretty awesome. A moment of panic and disorientation strikes as you land upon the floor of the hallway. The world spins as if turned on its head. Flip that over. One shroud, no clues. The walls of your house are splattered with mud, and your hardwood floor is gone, replaced with a dirt path. Okay. So the back of these cards, the art, is all the same, which is great, because the other side is going to be different. So the cellar reads, The stairs leading down to your cellar are slick, and they glisten with a thin layer of ice. Then the back of the parlor. The entrance to the parlor is blocked by, the darkly, by a darkly glowing, unfathomable barrier. You cannot move into the parlor. You're unsure what would happen if you tried to cross the threshold of the strange barrier, but based on its extreme heat, you sure as hell don't want to try. Then the attic. The smell of rotten meat assaults your nostrils as you approach the attic stairs. Okay. That was all the end of my turn. So we go into the enemy phase. There are no enemies. Upkeep phase. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Ah, we got a weapon. Great. Enchanted blade. So the background of this card is unique um, because it can be used by two classes. There's only, I think, like five or six cards that can do that. Uh, so a three-cost asset, usable by Guardians and Mystic. Those are the two symbols at the top right. It's an item, relic, weapon, melee traded. Uses three charges. Uh, action, fight. You get plus one fight for this attack. As an additional cost to initiate this ability, you may spend one charge to empower the blade. If you do, you get plus one fight and deal plus one damage for the attack. It takes up a hand slot and an arcane slot. 
That's alright. That's pretty good. We wanted a weapon. Alright, Mythos phase. So we're on turn three to Doom of three. And let's see what we deal with. Ancient Evils. Place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. That art, though, is so good. Michael Com Comark. Good job. Dark forces stir against you. If you do not act quickly, a sinister plot will be fulfilled. Well, that will advance it. So when you reach the threshold, all doom on the board is removed unless it says otherwise. And you grab it and flip it over just like the act. Agenda 1B, a lapse in time. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. The lead investigator must decide, choose one. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. I kind of like my hand. I don't want to take horror. But the cop can take one, so we'll do that. He'll take one. I'll take one. That's fine. Okay, that was the mythos. And it's our turn again. Okay. First action. Let us equip our weapon. Yes, awesome. Second action. Let's... Let's go down to the cellar. So move is an action. We'll flip the cellar. Look at that art. Dimitri Bielak. <laughs> Discredit everybody. This is a four shroud location with two clues. Forced. After you enter the cellar, take one damage. Your cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of icy tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. Victory won. Well, we'll explain what victory is later. All you need to know now is we want it. Okay, well, so with with the magnifying glass, we're at four. If we pitch perception, puts us at six to a four, and that's the best we can do. So I say, let's go for it. <laughs> well, that happens. Auto fail. That card was wasted. That sucks. All right, enemy phase none. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Ah, working hunch. Good. Fast. Play only during your turn. Discover one clue at your location. I will most likely be doing that. Alright. Turn four. One doom. Did I read this one? Uh, agenda 2A, Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Seven threshold. Alright, let's see what we get. Rotting remains. Um, revelation. Test three willpower. For each point you fail by, take one horror. Well... I'm going to commit our skill steadfast here. And so when we add our health and sanity, we have 14, and we've only taken one damage, so 13. So now we have 10 or more health. We get plus 3, so we're a 6 to a 3. Let's move this back to where it's supposed to be. We're 6 to a 3, and a minus 1. Perfect. So we pass. Okay. It is our turn get our actions back. First thing, I'm just going to snag a clue for free. Then I think I'm going to, for my first real action, draw a card. That's good. Inquiring mind. So this is a skill that has three wild icons, which can be anything. It's innate. Commit to a skill test only if there's a clue at your location. If we wish to learn, we must first question everything we know. Well, I'm going to go ahead and commit this. So we are now a 7 to a 4. 
That's a minus two. We are good. Ooh. Grab the clue. Alright, and because we cleared a location with a victory point, we will toss it into the victory display. Um, just want to double check. The icy ghoul spawned in the cellar. Which is where we are. So, with my last action, I'm going to move out of the cellar. And that's my turn. No enemies. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Ah, the hallowed mirror. This is my healing card. It's a two cost asset. Item, relic, occult, and blessed traded. You're only allowed one per deck. Forced after the hallowed mirror enters play. Search your bonded cards, those ones on the side, for three copies of Soothing Melody. Add one to your hand and shuffle the other two into your deck. When the Hallowed Mirror leaves play, find each of those copies of Soothing Melody, even if they're out of play, and remove them from the game. And it's an accessory slot. Um, I'm not in a rush to play this, but it's good to have it. I haven't really taken too much damage, and I could play the Melody to heal the cop and myself, which isn't a bad idea if I find myself with an extra action or so. But, uh, let's, uh... Right, we're on turn five. Two Doom of Seven. And we have to deal with... A Ravenous Ghoul. Okay, well... I say we just... Kill him. Kill him as fast as we can. Alright. Investigation phase. Actions. First action. I'm going to charge up my enchanted blade. I'm going to commit vicious blow. So this, we start at four fight. He gives us one to five. Oh, I should have had that. Because that's a permanent, so that should be up. And then this gives us plus two. So we are seven. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We are an eight to its three. It's overkill, but uh, Vicious Blow in the Enchanted Blade plus me is 3 damage, killing the ghoul. There was no clues at our location, so I can't use my reaction ability, sadly. That's fine. Okay. I... Oh, did I... Uh, take 1 damage when you go in the cellar? I did not. There we go. Actually, yeah, we'll take it. It's fine. Alright. Um, two actions left. Spend one action to go up. Reveal the attic. Take a look at the art. One shroud. Two, two clues. Forced. After you enter the attic, take one horror. The bloody carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping into a small barrel. It's worth one victory point. So that was our second action to move. And I think our third action is going to play the mirror. So I'm going to get a Soothing Melody in my hand. Put two more into the... Ooh, frozen. There we go. Put two into the deck. So what a Soothing Melody does, it has a lot of tri a lot of uh, icons there on the side. Uh, it is a spell. It's bonded to the mirror. Heal two damage or two horror or any combination thereof from among investigators and or ally assets at your location. And you get to draw a card. And I will attempt this. Et le chasson se mêle au clair de lune, au comme clair de lune très de beau. Paul Verlaine, clair de lune. It's probably a song or something. I just don't know the tune. Okay. And that is the turn. Next enemy phase. No enemies. Upkeep phase. Get a resource. Draw a card. Ah. Well, I can't use this. I included two two different accessories, uh, more so because you never know when you're going to draw them. We unfortunately drew them back to back, because um, you can only have one of each unless you have a card that allows you to do more. So this is a three cost asset. It belongs to the Survivor and Seeker classes, um, so we are allowed to dip into Seekers. Um, it's an item charm with a reaction. After you commit a card to a skill test, exhaust this totem. That card gains another instance of one of its skill icons of your choice. 
We should have thrown it back immediately, but how could we have known? Okay. Uh, sadly, that was a dead draw, but whoa. What'd I do? What'd I do? Okay. Mythos. Hopefully that'll just go away. There we go. Three of seven. We are no longer at eight, but we are five, which is pretty good. Okay. Oh, sorry. We have to draw a card. Dissonant voices. Put dissonant voices into play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events. At the end of the round, discard it. And that's an event. That's an asset. That's an asset. I can play my skill, though. Alright, I'm going to first action draw a card. Take the initiative. Uh, so this is a skill. With three wild icons. Commit only to a skill test you are performing. Take the initiative. Loses one wild icon for each action that has been completed by Investigator this phase. So this is best played in the uh, Mythos phase before you before anyone takes an action. So that was my first action. Second action will be to Investigate. So we are a floating four with the magnifying glass. Minus two, we get it. So that's one clue. So we have enough to pass, but we want the victory point. So we drew a card, investigate, we'll investigate again. Actually, let's draw a card. Wow, okay. So my thought process behind this is if we draw an enemy and we kill it, we'll get the clue for free. And also, more cards is always good. This one is great. Uh, six cost asset, so we don't have the money for it, but something to work towards. Item, weapon, firearm, illicit traded. Uses five ammo, and for an action you spend one of those to get plus two fight and deal plus one damage. Used by both gangsters and police officers, the fully automatic Thompson submachine gun was favored due to its accuracy and high volume of fire. And it's a two-handed item. Okay. Cool. That's my whole turn. Um, end of turn, Distant Voices disappears. We go into the enemy phase, no enemies. Upkeep phase. Get a resource. Draw a guard. Ah, field work. I don't feel like this one's going to be too useful. It'll get max maybe one go. This scenario. But we'll see. It's not terrible. Alright, Mythos. Turn seven, four of seven. We get Frozen in Fear. A terrible card. <laughs> Alright, Frozen in Fear. Revelation. Put Frozen in Fear into play in your threat area. The first time you perform one of the following actions, move, fight, or evade, each round it costs one additional action. At the end of your turn, test three will. If you succeed, discard Frozen in Fear. Well, boo. At least I can play assets and stuff. So, uh, how about that? I have seven cards in hand. Hmm. I could do a turn of, like, two resources and investigate. Or I could just stay here again and maybe get another monster. Because if I get three resources, I'm able to play couple things. I don't think I'm going to play field work for field work. Maybe just commit it for a skill or something. Because that Thompson is looking mighty nice. I wish I could get the Bandler and the Thompson out, but not... I can sacrifice the blade and the magnifying glass. So let's do that. We'll do three actions. Just, yeah. We'll just, <laughs> not even. Enemy, none. Upkeep. So that puts us up to six and puts us to max cards in hand. For love of Christ. This is our signature weakness. Put cover up into play in your threat area with three clues on it. As a reaction, when you would discover one or more clues at your location, discard that many clues from clover, or from cover up instead. 
Whenever the game ends, if there are any clues on cover-up, you suffer one mental trauma. No thank you. Okay. Well, that changes things a little bit. That was just the... Uh, Alright, so end of the upkeep phase. We have to test our will here. So I can't use take the initiative because... But I can use steadfast. Which I think I will. I do not want frozen fear sticking around. So that puts us at a 6 to the 3. That is a minus 1. So we pass. Get out of here. Alright. Okay. That was all just the end of the... <laughs> now to the new turn. Turn 8. 5 doom. Two to go. Counter. Dissonant voices. You cannot play assets or events. Good lord. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing with my turn. Okay. Let's investigate. So, magnifying glass will pump me up to one. Stratus of one. I'm just going to do three investigates in a row. So, first one. Elder sign. That's pass. Get out of here. Nothing special happens, no. Second one. Minus one. We pass. Third one. Minus three. We tie. Alright, shroud is one. It's got a double check. Yeah. Good thing I stayed there. Uh well, shroud's one at the other one anyway. There's my turn. Uh, weakness out of the way, which is great, but no enemies, go straight to upkeep. Unexpected courage, great. This gets discarded. This sticks around. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um okay, that's the end of that. Mythos. We are at turn nine. Six. Let's really hope we don't get ancient evils. Okay, crypt chill. Test for will. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control if you cannot take two damage instead. The supernatural cold threatens to freeze your soul. I will commit take the initiative. I'm okay if I lose an asset though. Because I'm going to lose the enchanted blade and just play the 45 Thompson. Right? What's my alternative? Play take the initiative, and I could bend the leer and still hold the blade as well. And just ditch the magnifying glass. Sure. Why not, right? Let's give it a go. Alright, so I am a 6 to 4. It's not great odds. Oh my god, we tied. Oh, a little bit of light. There we go. Cool. Oh, pff, didn't mean to flip that one. Okay. Cool. Alright. Uh, let's go with the plan then? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, so this turn will all be set up. Two to play the b bandolier. Get in there. Gain one resource. And then... Ditch the magnifying glass. To play this. So... We got Tommy gun and a sword, because we're awesome. Okay. Now it's us. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Of course, of course this comes, like, later. So, this is Roland's 38 special. It has uh, good icons there. Fight, evade, and wild. It is item, weapon, firearm traded. Roland Banks deck only. Uses four ammo. Spend one amount... Mammo? Spend one ammo, fight. You get plus one fight for this attack. If there are one or more clues at your location, you get plus three instead. This attack does plus one damage. Really good, actually. Could replace the... 
Enchanted Blade. But I don't think it will come to that. Look how many charges we have. Alright, moving on to the Mythos. We're on turn 10. 7 Doom, so this does flip. Agenda 2B, the tunnels below. A feral beast, roughly humanoid, with canine cast and hooves for feet, tears through the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath your house. Fiendish howling echoes from deep within the underground caverns. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy. Okay. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. One. There it is. There's a ghoul right away. Alright, we've seen this guy before. Did I read did I read his maybe we haven't seen him? Two two two. Two fight, two health, two evade. He's a humanoid monster ghoul. It was a colossal and nameless blasphemy with glaring red eyes and held in bony claws a thing that had been a man, gnawing at the head as a child nibbles at a stick of candy. H. P. Lovecraft, Pikmin's model. So this is like the basic ghoul. He does one damage and one horror. But we can dispatch him pretty easily, I think. And we'll be able to snag that clue for free. Which is great. So we will... He's only two. We're currently at five. So we'll use a charge of the blade. Putting us at seven to two. Zero will do it. So he is dead. And we'll trigger our ability to get this clue for free. Which is great. And we will copy the attic into our victory display. Now I'm in a weird predicament because in the deck are two victory point ghouls. But there's 25 encounter cards. And there's only at most 10 turns left. So, oh, I should have read this, sorry. Agenda 3A, they're getting out. You hear a crazed howl outside, and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and clawing at everything in their way. Forced, at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location towards the parlor. And then forced, at the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. So, yeah. Most interesting. Okay. Alright, 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 alright. I still have an encounter card to take. Rotting Remains. Revelation Test 3. For each point you fail by, take one horror. A sickening display of gore causes you to wretch. You're glad this wasn't you. Um. I'm a three to a three. I don't want to take three horror though. All right, I'll play unexpected courage, bumping me up to five. Minus four. So that takes me to take two. Wow, and I wasn't going to commit anything. Okay. Um. There's my turn. Alright, I'll play Soothing Melody to go down to Sanity. Um, I still don't feel geared enough to progress, so I think the next two, I'll draw two cards. Kind of useless. The camera's no good anymore. And, uh, 45 automatic is is good, um, but I roll in special. Actually, I think they're exactly the same at this point, except for Roland's is cheaper and has better icons. So the automatic is a four cost asset item weapon firearm. Uses four ammo. Spend one ammo. Fight. You get plus one fight for the stack and deal plus one damage. Now the hawk eye folding camera. If you get this beginning or mid game some cool stuff can happen. It's a two cost asset. It takes up a hand slot. After the last clue is discovered from your location, place one resource from the token pool on this card as evidence. 
limit once per game at each location. While Hawkeye Folding Camera has one evidence, you get plus one sanity, static, two plus one willpower, and then three plus one sanity. Really good thing to start with. Kinda useless halfway through. Kinda useless at the end. Actually, completely useless at the end. At least it's got a good pip I can throw it towards. Um, yeah. Okay, well, that was my turn. Go to the upkeep phase. Get a resource. Draw a card. Beat cop number two. Well, I might use his ability to discard him for an extra damage if I can easily get another one out, but yeah, we'll see. Still have a few turns to try to fish out the extra experience guys. So Doom 1 of 10. Hey, speaking of, spawns in the attic. I believe that's where we are. Yep. So he's engaged with us. Humanoid Monster Ghoul, the Flesh Eater. He has 4 fight, 4 health, and only 1 evade. Spawns specifically in the attic. A monstrous creature feeds from the rotting carcass in the attic. Victory 1. Uh, deals 1 damage and 2 horror if he attacks. Okay, this seems... Pretty easy peasy to me. This is what we wanted. Okay, it's probably the best we're gonna do as well. So let's use up the last charge of the enchanted blade, putting us at a plus two. So that is a seven to a four. There's only two failures for seven four. Yeah, let's go for it. Perfect. So that is two damage. And then we'll shoot at it with our Thompson, our Tommy gun. Um, that is also seven. Minus two, perfect. He is defeated. And into the victory display with you. Third action, I'm gonna move down. Am I prepared to fight the ghoul priest? I have my gun, I can totally take him out. I got time if I want to see if I can fish out the other one. 23 encounter cards. You know what? We'll wait. I do want the experience. Um, and we could probably gear up somehow here with our turn. So, uh, enemy to upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Still have another weakness in here. Ah! Speaking of things to buff yourself up. Something worth fighting for. Three cost asset. Talent. Something worth fighting for may be assigned horror dealt to other investigators at your location. I can't die here. Not now. Not yet. Soaks three w sanity. I needs that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, mythos. Two of ten. Doing okay. Ghoul minion. I was kind of excited for a second when I saw ghoul. But not the right not the right ghoul. Alright. Um we'll shoot you. With our first action. Uh seven do a two. Bye. Okay. What to do? Do we play Roland's special? To so we're kind of like blowing through our ammo here. Yeah, why not, right? Get rid of the enchanted blade. Rolling special comes out. Um, and then last action, gain a resource. Okay, no enemies. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Guts. Guts is good. Uh, turn 13. 3 of 10. Ancient Evils. So we've seen that before. That makes it 4 of 10. Okay. T we're okay. We're okay. Investigation. I don't need to equip this. Like, there's no way I'm going to get attacked twice, right? 
Boy, I don't really need to play anything else either, so... I think action one and two will be to gain a resource, and then play something worth fighting for. And third action, I'll draw a card. Shortcut. What's all my other weakness in here? What am I looking for in here? Dynamite? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't think I'm going to get lucky. Uh, I could let one more turn go by and just maybe resource up. Maybe replace the Hallowed Mirror with the Grizzly Totem. Because I don't need to heal. Alright, yeah, we'll let one more turn go by then. Okay. Hold on, what did I do with my turn? I gained a resource. I played something worth fighting for. And then I didn't do anything else, right? Gain a resource. Okay. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Hey, that's a good one. Ba boom, ba boom. I guess there's two more ancient evils in there. Probably. Crypt chill. Test four. Sanity. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. If you cannot, take two damage instead. I'm actually okay if I just lose the hallowed mirror. So I'm not gonna commit anything. Minus one. That's a fail. Hallowed mirror goes bye bye. That's cool. I keep forgetting to like. I'm speeding through this now. Alright, my turn. Gain a resource. Play the Grizzly Totem. Cool. Last turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got nothing that's. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I'll just gain a resource just to do something. And then at the end of my turn, I'm going to spend three clues. Act 2B, Breaking the Barrier. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking passage into the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. Put the set-aside Lita Chandler into play in the parlor. Sp spawn the set-aside Ghoul Priest in the hallway. Come with me. Oh, I forgot there was two of these. I think there's the same card, but for some reason... Gave us two. So he's going to spawn with us. And Lita spawns over here. The revealed side of the parlor. Beautiful art. Two shroud, no clues. Action, resign. This is too much for me. You run out of the front door fleeing in panic. While Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains the ability Parlay, test for intellect. If you succeed, take control of Lita. And Lita reads, zero cost asset. Unique card. She is the zealot. This campaign is called Knight of the Zealot, so there you go. Ally traded. While you control Lita Chandler, she gains each investigator at your location gains plus one fight. As a reaction, when an investigator at your location successfully attacks a monster enemy, that investigator deals plus one damage, and she soaks three health and three sanity. She's actually pretty good. <coughs> Okie dokie. Well, the ghoul priest spawned on us. He is a four fight, five health per investigator, and four to evade. Humanoid, monster, ghoul, and our first elite. He preys on the highest fight. I'm the only prey, though. He is a hunter, and he retaliates if you miss an attack against him. A figure in red robes wearing a bone mask. It gibbers and snarls before leaping to attack. Two victory. Ooh. Uh, does two damage and two sanity. I just remembered something, actually. Gotta grab the soothing melodies. I have two soothing melodies in here? Wow. There we go. And then I'll 
I'll shuffle that. So I only have seven cards left in the deck. That's, that's kind of crazy. Okay. Alright, what's up, Ghoul Priest? So he, that all happens at the end of my turn. Mythos. Um, did we get an extra Doom? Because he's in the hallway. The end of the round. I don't know. Act 3A, what have you done? A woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Objective, if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. Huh. Obscuring fog. Well, that's just uh, thematic. We're in the hallway, it starts filling up with fog. This guy bursts through the wall. And uh, the music, the music swells. Okay. Well, let's shoost him. First action. Tommy gun against this guy. So that's a seven versus four. I'm going to let it go as is. Holy shit, we lost. That actually failed. Okay. So two sanity goes to you. One damage to you and one to me. Holy crap. Right, we're going to overpower his ass. So we are a nine. Elder sign. Okay. Cool, thanks. Did I spend a charge for that? I don't know if I did. It was definitely a second action. Third action... <gasps> oh, I know what I can do. Okay. Oh, I get to draw a card because I was successful. Dynamite! <laughs> You're no good right now. Alright. Um, I have no way to buff myself further. Just gonna check. Over here uh, is all like the player window stuff if you ever need it. Okay, cool. There's a player window after. Okay. So we're gonna use the last bullet of the Thompson. So we're still 7 to 4. I'll throw in a B cop to be 8 to 4. Alright, cool. Okay, and what now what's gonna happen? I have no more actions left, right? Enemy phase begins. So if we follow what to do on the enemy phase, hunter enemies move, right? But before they attack, there's a player window. Which is important. Because I'm gonna discard the B cop. Oop. Which gets rid of this stuff. To deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Which just happens to be the ghoul priest. Who ends up in the victory display. Because we kills him. Hell yeah. Flip that last one. Act 3B. Defending the home. When the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground, and the chaos of the house quiets. But the stranger in your parlor doesn't seem relieved. You broke my seal, and that was to set to trap the ghouls within! She raises her torch. Now we must make more direct measures and burn this hell pit to the ground! The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. It was never much of a home. Burn it down. This hell pit is my home. No way are we burning it. Um, I'm conflicted because I think if you choose the first one, Lita joins you, but you take a mental trauma. And if you pick the second one, she doesn't join your like she her 
her card isn't physically in your deck, but um, she, for story purposes, f follows you. But and you gain no, no trauma. And I think you get an extra experience. Um. Only because there's fire behind Roland in the alternate art here. We'll do it. Ugh. It's only a one off, right? The scenario. We'll do it. We'll burn the stupid house down. Even though I don't like it. Alright, so R1. So in the Do Not Read section, it says Do Not Read until the end of the scenario. If no resolution was reached, or each investigator resigned or was defeated, you would read that one. But we're reading resolution one, which is towards the end there. You nod and allow the red-haired woman to set the walls and floor of your house ablaze. The fire spreads quickly and you run out the front door to avoid being caught in the inferno. From the sidewalk, you watch as everything you own is consumed by flames. Come with me, the woman says. You must be told of the threat that lurks below. Alone we are surely doomed, but together we can stop it. In your campaign log, record that the house is burned to the ground. And then we also earn the Lady Chandler card. You can add it to our deck. It doesn't count towards the deck size, which is great. Alright. Burned the house. Sad face. Alright, I think there's a little more after this as well. The lead investigator suffers one mental trauma from watching his or her home become a smoldering ruin. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Don't forget to add locations. Each investigator earns two bonus experience as he or she gains insight to the hidden world of the mythos. Okay. We have one mental trauma. That sucks. We earned Lita Chandler. And so let's counter experience here. What's happening? Here we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we get plus two from the scenario, giving us seven. Now, I'm not a great deck builder, but I will try to use that experience wisely. So next time you see this deck, um, you will see Lita in it. And you will also see a couple other things, potentially. Um, I have a few ideas. Nothing crazy, but uh, a few ideas. So with that, I think that's the end of Scenario 1. Look how crazy I was getting here. Um, if you guys liked what you saw or uh, know any ways of making things smoother or like you saw things I could fix or work on, let me know. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up for scenario two. I'm going to upgrade the deck and save the save the game and then after a week or so uh, hopefully I get some feedback and then I'll record this episode two. As much as I really just want to just plow through the whole thing. I like feedback. Um, I love community engagement. Like I said, it's been it's been a while since I put a video out, um, and I hope to do it regularly. My daughter is a little grown up now. She's she's two. She's a little more manageable, um, so I think I can I think I can work out once a week to get this done. So yeah, I've been Shadow Slayer X, or just call me Shadow. If I could change my name, maybe I would. But uh, yeah. So go pick this game up if you're interested. Um, in a week's time, I should have another episode out. So please comment, please like, and uh, yeah. Um, Roland Banks, he's the guy. Uh, he's the guy you're supposed to start with. I'll just leave uh, with this. I don't know if I talked about this. I think I did, right? Did I read his? Did I read his thing? I don't know. I'll read it next time if I didn't. All right. See everybody. <laughs> Bye.